All right, people, here we go. This is Tim with the Word of Life Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Junior Mount on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself, as always, want to offer you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. I'll go ahead and give you our service times. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m., and we come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service. We also have midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. PM, and I would make this announcement short notice I know but for some <laughs> who might watch this possibly tonight maybe tomorrow during the day uh, and it snuck up on me and I apologize we, we are having our <clears throat> or one of our uh, fellowship meetings um, tomorrow night at Word of Life Church it's where our churches and our fellowship group meet together once every couple of months to uh, just for a half service to to visit with one another and to worship with one another uh, but we're having that at the Word of Life Church uh, tomorrow night Saturday night uh, the 18th <laughs> I had to look there for a minute uh, at 7 p.m. so uh, anyone that wants to come out and uh, take part in that and just visit and worship with us it's a Saturday night and he's like brother it's Saturday <laughs> brother it's Saturday night I know probably <laughs> people got plans Saturday night but you know I throw the invite out there. You accept it or not, you know, hey, that's fine. But we always want to invite people to come out and be with us and enjoy. Enjoy having people come out just like the rest of all the rest of the churches do. Enjoy people come out and visiting and uh, uh, especially if it's normally people that you don't see on a regular basis, uh, you enjoy uh, seeing them come out. Uh, you know, your brothers and sisters that you in Christ that you don't see. Uh, a lot of times, uh, sometimes you are brothers and sisters, <laughs> uh, blood or blood kin that you don't see it sometimes a lot that you enjoy seeing sometimes. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, you know things of the things of life and work and family and everything like that. A lot, you know, we understand a lot of that gets in the way sometimes, and uh, so we don't uh, we don't hold we're not holding grudges or anything. We don't hold grudges, you know. As Christians, we're not supposed to hold grudges, you know. We're supposed to lay stuff aside like that but uh, um, but uh, unfortunately sometimes that's not always the case but uh, uh, we just uh, we just throw the invitation out there and you know that that is very true uh, I want to put that out there we're not supposed to we're not to hold grudges you know if we have some kind of problem anything we're supposed to go to the person or persons because if we say we're Christians we're Christ like then and we say we're going to heaven then how are we to how why or how are we to be holding grudges like this against people we're not supposed to uh, that's not that's not should not be part of of the Christian's vocabulary. Now I know sometimes there has there sometimes has to be a separation because some does not worship and does not understand and grows in a different direction than others and you know even had it uh, examples in the Word of God you know it was it was Paul and uh, maybe it was a Barnabas I believe it was sometimes I have to think for a minute had a a, a separation or uh, and it was. They so said it was so sharp that they had to separate and take. Uh, who was it? it was over uh, 
was John Mark, I believe it was. And they had to separate and go into different directions of the ministry. Uh, sometimes that happens and it's un unfortunate, but uh, we hate to see stuff like that happen. But uh, it's just, we want to see still, no matter what, the will of God still come to pass because it's not about our own wills. We shouldn't be in it to see our own wills come to fruition, come to pass, and it shouldn't be about what we want. It should be about what the will of God is for our lives and should be about the church's business. Now, I'm talking about the house of God's business, like in the treasury or what the next project for the church is to build it to build on or you know and the next something that's not I don't know no I'm talking about the father's business because, you know we're the church when we come to the building we are the church so and when we go out we are to be about the father's business amen amen so just you got to bear that in mind because you know I don't want to be at odds and I hope everyone feels this which I, I want to be I don't want to, I don't want to be at odds with anybody that I would call a brother and sister in Christ now this is not aimed at anybody in particular I'm just I don't know why the Lord's leading this way but this is just this to go out to anybody and I hope anybody that gets this would let it sink down and not let it bounce off a stony heart or something, but allow it to take root and heart and have them to think about on these things. You know, if something's happened in the past, I mean don't don't keep that stony heart about it. But you know, come let us reason together, or you know, maybe you have something against someone else. You know, come, you know, let, let get it out of the way, because you know sometimes it'll poison you, even your own growth and worship in the Lord. Well, it's not mine. It's not mine. Well, you know. What the Bible's about that proud look, about that pride. God talks about hating a proud look and having that chin high and everything in your own self. God wants his people to dwell together in, in peace and you know to, to, to be, to be uh, knit together to work for him. You know, never in my time a seen such a. I hate to even start this way, but it's just it, 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 it's it's true. Every time have I seen such a time of separation? People not wanting to worship with this one, people not wanting to worship with that one. Well, they did this or they did that. I don't like this about this one. I don't like this about that one. I don't like this one about this church. I don't like this about that church. So we're just going to go in this direction. And they can just go in this direction and do whatever they want. And they can do whatever they want. You know what? We're not a bunch of children. We're supposed to be, we're, we're supposed to be children of God. But we're not supposed to act like a bunch of children. Can you hear Amen. I hope I can get amen out there. We'll stack like men and women of God and get over these little things that happen. Well, really, it's not little to me. Well, you know, if it's something because someone said something, we're supposed to be adults and supposed to be able to take things and stride. You know, if, if you can't take something like that, uh, you know, well, I've been hurt in church. Well, join the club. How many times have I said on here, I've been hurting? four or five churches in my time but I'm not going to let it stop me from going to the house of God where I can worship and be amongst brothers and sisters 
in Christ. Say, brother, if you, if you get hurt, what do you do? Well, what I'm supposed to, what I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go and find out what the situation is. Saying, was this? Was this something toward me? Because I got to find out. Because I don't want there to be a separation. I don't want it to be a problem. And if the person's honest and going to be honest with me, then it's it's going to be a yay or an a. But the Bible says we're supposed to we're supposed to be it's either supposed to be a yay or an a. And if it's an a, okay, well, no problem then. Go on. And then it's on them if if they're actually telling me the truth. Then, then it was it was nothing. It was just something in my own, it was the enemy trying to play against. Play something against, you know, trying to sow discord. What he's trying to do in a lot of situations, in a lot of churches. Shouldn't be no surprise. I'm saying a lot here lately about a lot of stuff. None of the stuff should take us unaware right now because the enemy's fighting a lot of things going on right now. Fighting against the churches that are still serving God doesn't matter about the churches to him I mean it does matter but to him it doesn't matter the churches that are not serving God. he's got those churches he doesn't care about them because they don't have no power because he's already got them now I pray for them to break out of that and fight once again and get on that firing line <laughs> keep on the firing line get on the battle fight back against him run him out of there and get back on fire for God but if I go to a person and they said, yeah, or yay, you said this or you did this and I didn't like it, and talk it out. Go to the altar, pray about it, and work things out. Like adults, like adult brothers and sisters in Christ should do. What they would do, well, the word of God says we're supposed to do like they did back then but once again I think I mentioned this in the last video I did pride it all comes back down to that well I'm not going to do this if they're not going to do this and the other person said well well, I'm not going to do this because they're not going to do this it all comes it, it's it talks pride and you know that's one that's one of the deadliest things because it will lead to many other things the devil puts the pride in the heart of man puts it up here gets it past the the helmet of salvation that should be guarding your mind and your thoughts gets it past and gets it down into your heart and then he can work whatever he wants to at that point help this is going out to somebody for some reason or some group of people so I don't know you know Lord lead God you know this is not fussing toward anybody it's just to, to, to help to exhort to that you know say hey look let the enemy play with you like this or to play you like this play you against one another You know, been a, I've been accused of a lot of things in the past. Well, why don't you come and talk to me about it? I'm sure in certain circles, what I preach, what I teach, the way I preach, what I teach, is probably hated, not liked. Why don't you come talk to me about it? I'm just giving examples here. So other people could say the same thing about and, and at the, the, the same thing about other people and saying that, you know, hey they've been accused of this been accused of this, and the, the same the same thing go talk to them about it but no it's easier just to say no I don't want to have anything to do with it let them just stay over here and I'll stay over here so 
exactly what the enemy wants. He wants to sow the discord and keep a separation. That's exactly what he wants in these last days. By doing that, by doing what he's doing, causing people to say, I've been hurt in these churches. I've been, I was hurt in this church. This person over at this church hurt me. I've been hurt. And that's the one, uh, what we said. That's one of the number one excuse that I've heard and that I get most of the time talking about people going to church or wanting to go to church. Most people saying, I am done with institutionalized religion. I, you know, I, well, most for the most part I am too I'm not talking about I'm talking about going to a house of God as a Christian to worship, just worship with your brothers and sisters in Christ I'm not talking about in really I'm talking about having a relationship enjoying coming together to worship because you gain strength from one another. I'll say is that you know when I together with the brothers and sisters in Christ I gain strength. Once again forsaking the assembly of ourselves together do it more so as you see the day approaching. I'm not saying you have to go and Get your name put on the book somewhere, and you know, and, and that that's 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 the main thing right there. No, as I as we said the other night, talking about no, first thing is the most important thing. The salvation is the first thing. All of a sudden, people say, "Well, he just needs to get in church." No, let me say one thing. I disagree. What? What? <laughs> salvation is the first thing that needs to happen. You need to get saved, amen? Now, sometimes you go to church and that happens. The, pre the preacher preaches. Some, some, some people just get in the door and all of a sudden the Spirit of God hits them and they hit that altar and they get saved. So, hey, praise, praise the Lord, right? But salvation, that's the first thing, amen? Well, after that, as we said the other night, anything else, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get to that after the salvation part. Well, you know, you, you get you in the church, you know, or you can go to church wherever, and all the other things will fall in place after that. Most important, salvation, number one. Get your sins under the blood, get you on the way, on that narrow way that leadeth to life everlasting. Get you on the way to heaven. Get you off that broad way that leadeth to everlasting destruction. Everlasting death and destruction. Mm. But don't let the devil, don't let the devil put that in your mind as an excuse to use because yes, at some point, some way, you're going to be hurt in a church. But don't stop. Don't let that stop you. Ask the Lord to send you where He wants you. That's what. That's what the they, they they the Lord out of the equation there. It's and they stop right there. Well, let's go here. Now, like, let's go here. Seek the Lord. Put Him in the middle of that prayer. Put Him first. Lord, send us. Send me. Send us where you want us to work in the body, as it pleases Him. Right? Amen. I don't want to go where there's work. I just, I, you know, I go. It feels like I got to do something for the Lord. Good. That's what we're supposed to do. If you have a work in the house of God, that's a good work. That's part of the works that we're to do after we're saved. And there was a way I would say we will have good works after we're saved. But not, no, no, that's not what saves you or keeps you saved. 
But we're going to have good works after we're saved. I know the main works we're going to have is outside of the church building. But, hey, if you have a work inside the church, praise the Lord. To teach, to preach, to, to, be, a, a, to be a deacon, to, to, to open the doors for people coming in, to be a janitor. You know, there's small, I, you know, forgive me for saying that. There's not a small work, as I said, then, and there's not a small work in the house of God. If it's for the Lord, you're doing it for the Lord. He impresses upon you to do it. It is a good work, and do it with your whole heart. And there's some stuff that people do that never get mentioned, that very few people know that people do, and they don't seek any pats on the back, any accolades for it, and they just do it. They do it because they love the house of God and they do it and because they love the Lord. And it's a work that needs to be done. I guess when I mean small, it may be a smaller work or something like that. It just needs to be done. They see it needs to be done and they do it. But they do it because they do it for the love, as I said, the house of God because they just love God and they want to do it but no there's no smaller or small work if it's God has impressed you to do it then do it but we do it like I said because we love God that's it's going out to whoever and I hope there again as always something be said to exhort you and to help with something but I also want to throw in there before we get into it there's just so much <laughs> that, you, that you get in your mind and you don't want to you know don't want to bring a like two or three hour video but hell out here jumping from one thing to another uh get a sweet coffee before we go which is getting cold Woo. Mm. some people you should know a guy who who would drink ooh, a cup of coffee, the same cup of coffee, a large one, all day? Who, my goodness, and by almost in day, it would be ice cold, and he would still be drinking on that. Uh, but each of their own. That's if you can, if you can stand it, and that's what you like. Go right ahead, but not me. Who I gotta have it? Gotta have it pretty hot. My goodness, if I'm gonna do something like that, I'm gonna drink a. a, a cold Dr. Pepper or something like that <laughs> but anyway a lot, of, a lot of talk and a lot of things going on these days and I've seen a lot about especially being since we're these last days and we're talking about COVID and vaccinations and just wanted to throw this quickly out here because we're going to we're going to be hip hop we're going to be hopping around <laughs> A little bit on some verses here because I'm going to talk about specifically talking about the house of God and some things that's going on in the land. But talking about here's some mention and some chatter about, and I mean, I don't mean to say the word chatter in a bad way. You say stuff and you, you try to make sure you don't want to offend people. But about, just say it, about the mark of the beast and talking about the vaccinations and everything and I know for some that is a that's a touchy subject because you know I know a lot of people have children and such and they and they have to get them vaccinated and everything uh, and some some refuse to do it and um, you know, I, I you know I will leave that to you, but that's between you know you and the Lord and and you know what's like between school and everything and the requirements and everything and, and that's 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 a hard that's a hard situation. But with what's going on now, we have to think about this. I mean, just thinking about, for instance, the things 
that's leading up and I believe <clears throat> that all this is just preparing us and I think everybody knows this the preparing us and leading up for us taking the mark and and people's like well what we don't know exactly what the mark is well I mean we're, we're seeing many things you know, implantable chips, uh, biotech, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, nanotechnology, you know, these biotech tattoos that goes on us. There's all video, you know, a guy that he, you know, had a chip in and he did, he did everything. It was a guy in another country. He did everything by this chip. He bought things. He uh, started his car. He got into his apartment complex. Opened his fr his door to his apartment. I mean, he he literally did almost everything in his life via this chip in his hand. But of course, he said, you know, he said, "Well, I believe in the future, ever, uh, a lot of people will do this, and I think it will it will be it will be a uh, uh, voluntary." You know, of course, he had to say that. <laughs> but. And we know what the book, the Revelation, says about the number. And you guys have heard me in the past say, I think it's, it is going to be a combination of several different things. It's not going to be just one thing. And the way that some people teach these things, oh, it's going to be this. and It's, it's just going to be this right here. It's going to be just this one thing right here. I don't believe that. I think it's going to be, if we look and see all the things coming in, and if we go on this one thought of it being just this one thing, we're missing so many other things, and we're going down one singular tra trail. And that's where it said that people are going to be fooled. through this deception or deceptions plural that's coming because it talks about and we know about the few that's going to be found on that narrow way because it talks about even the elect be seed if, if it were possible And this is going to really show the proof. You know, those saying the proof is in the pudding. It's going to it's going to weed out those that are true to the Lord, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the ones that are just lukewarm or cold. It's going to weed out. You know, those that are going to. They're not really not going to love their life to the end. That's going to love the Lord instead of their own existence to the end. And basically going all the way to the end saying, no, I don't care. I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ because he gave his life for me. You do what you have to do. Because I know I'm saved. And I'm going to heaven. And see, we've got even with that, with this teaching going about saying that you can take the mark of the beast, but you will still be able to reject it at the very end and still go to heaven. With that false teaching right now going on, even, the people are swallowing that up. See, you can still have your cake and eat it too. You can still partake of the things of the world and now all that, that's going to happen, but oh, we found a loophole in the Bible. You can still take the mark. God's still going to love you, and He understands. And he's nah, He's not. That goes back to those saying that everyone is still going to make it, no matter what you do. No matter what you do, you're still going to make it. You still take the mark, even though it clearly says if you take the mark, you are history. You are gone. You have decided to take the world. Take the beast, the antichrist, the false prophet and take on all that they stand for reject the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he has done for you or you've not even got to that point you totally have nothing to do 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. You totally went against him or don't want anything to do with him, period. The two classes right there, the unsaved and the unsaved, no other, no middle ground. You're going to take the mark. Now, I didn't mean for this whole video to be about that, but, you know, as I said, many, many things it's going to include and fall into what the mark is going to be. I wish we had the time. Maybe, my goodness, maybe we should just do a separate whole video on that. All the things that the mark is going to be. Not going to be just technology. Is that going to be part of it? Sure, because while we are tech, a, a technocracy, our society is a part of a technocracy. People that control things using technology control us using technology. It's a technocracy. I want to go further with this right now, but but let's start. But, but, whoa, <laughs> pull these reins back here. Pull, pull them back, brother. Part of what we're seeing right now that's leading up to this. Maybe there's going to be a, a part, a part due to this part two. But, but and it started. My my my, I have to. What, 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 nothing new <laughs> oh lord nothing new under the sun it started back as soon as Eve said oh okay what did the devil say ye shall be as gods don't worry God said he just don't he does he's, he's a, he's, he just doesn't want you to be as him knowing good and evil ball oh, you know he just but you know take this and you know oh my goodness your eyes are going to be open and you're going to be like God and oh my goodness it's just going to be so wonderful and you're going to have all this wisdom and knowledge you know and that's what the Luciferians now still say you know that you know Lucifer is you know the light bringer and he's going to bring all this wisdom and knowledge and everything like that uh, and that's a good thing right you know of the day it was a the state capital I don't know exactly where it was there was a Luciferian uh, invocation a black mass high priest is sitting there with her book of shadows saying all these things with a bunch of the other people all dressed in black behind sitting there wasn't doing it nobody was touching them but what bothered lady wasn't even bothering them lady down from them was a Christian lady was kneeling down praying just praying said that she was there to pray and share Christ with them like when they were done or anything three policemen came up put her on the ground handcuffed her took her to jail but yet that black mass on the state, state capitol wherever that was I don't remember exactly I have to look at it again went on, nobody touched him, nobody said a word to him, it was all good, yet the Christian woman that had, had, had the nerve and had the Christian backbone to go down there to stand up to that nonsense, that junk, that evil stuff, please him come down, she wasn't doing it, wasn't disturbing him, wasn't doing anything, she was just kneeling then off to the side, wasn't even making any noise, wasn't even praying loud, got arrested and taken to jail. 
and you people saying, no, we're not in the last days, it can't be. We still got this coming and this coming and this coming. Yeah, we got stuff coming up. Look how fast it's happening right now. That wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. Maybe not even 10 years ago, but look what's happening now. Look at the abominations that has come into the land. Brother, we got a president that supports this stuff. Yeah, but look what's still happening. It, it's coming in by law. Being allowed by law. Remember, what was it, 10, 20 years ago? Uh, but maybe even further, when they started allowing on military bases the Church of Satan, Wicca, and all that being allowed to come in. And we thought that was horrible and an abomination. How dare they allow that stuff to come in there when they used to allow just churches and and you know and and the the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to be preached on these bases and everything. And they're allowing Wicca and the Church of Satan and Luciferianism on these bases and dev worship. They started. And now we got it open out in public. On the stairs of state capitals. We got statues to Lucifer. The Baphomet statue, you know, the goat statue with the wings and the thing, you know, it represents. There's so many. There's so much about that statue that, that, that to go into that represents. I, there again, they got time for that. And you know, I don't hear. I've not heard a report. I could be wrong. Correct me. I don't. I've not heard a report of any of these satanic statues, these Baphomet statues or satanic statues being touched during this whole statue nonsense being t torn down. Well, brother, we're in time of grace. Yeah. You know, and I, that, that's absolutely right. I believe time of grace. And these people that have not went past a certain point and people don't like this when I get serious about this and talk about it. people don't like hearing this certain point these conditional clauses they don't like that word they don't like that phrase conditional clauses they don't like hearing about that because they know that they're going to have to mark up they don't like when it comes to salvation that there are conditional clauses that the Bible points out that you have to mark up to Especially when it talks about that, no, if you take the mark of the beast, you are damned for eternity. If you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you are damned for all eternity. Lord help us. Yes, grace, mercy, by grace through faith, you are saved, absolutely. If you turn your back on God and you never come back to him and you live a life of sin, the remainder of your days and you never repent no sin is going to enter heaven the word of God plainly says that once again and I'll repeat it every time I have to I get on here if I have to irresistible grace is not taught in the word of God you turn your back on God that's it he's not required to do anything else you reject him You turn your back on him. You jump out of his hand. Sure, he will, he will never leave you or forsake you, but you can forsake him. You say, well, I, there's, there's forgiveness. There's forgi yeah, there's forgiveness if you take it. The tree is known by the fruit it bears. You were grafted in by adoption. So take heed because the natural natural branches is were cut cut off and you were grafted in and you were adopted in. Guess what? You can be taken out as well. I don't take glory in the fact that but each one of us 
has to walk a walk that is pleasing to God and not wander around just living a life haphazardly dabbling in sin here and there oh it's okay God understands he just understands it it's just sinning in this flesh just a little bit my spirit it's not sinning yeah that's right the spirit inside of you is perfect the flesh is not but the spirit working through you and out of you it's going to sweep the clean and what's coming out of you is going to be working better sanctifying drawing you closer to God walking life and in life as Christ wanted you to walk be you perfect as I am perfect as your father in heaven is there you go preaching that want that perfection in this life no. God knows your heart and whether or not you are trying or you're not He knows if you have a heart to serve him or he knows if you are out of his will and going in the opposite direction. Some of the worst statements I have ever heard about talking about is that even if you commit a murder or commit suicide, and other things and then you immediately die as long as you have had the blood applied to your soul you're going to be shouting in heaven is that so but see the rub right there is the the the, the <laughs> I gotta get into the word here the little Air they can pop, polish that over right there is saying see well he never truly or they never truly got salvation that's why they can do that no I've heard people give the test say, well if they truly got it, they you know if they never serve God again after their the day they got the day they, they said Lord forgive me after that and they truly got saved and they never served God the rest of their lives then they're going to make heaven their home. I don't find that in the Word of God. I do not find that in the Word of God. Now I know it's not by your strength, by your might, by your holiness. I know it's all through the Lord Jesus, but it's through His Spirit working through you. If you have a heart to serve him you're going to want to serve him you're going to want to put forth the effort because there's a separation day coming and as I said it many many times it is going to come down to that it all it all and that still amazes me I'm not I guess because I, I, I preached it or taught it or whatever I don't know I've said it so much I, I've not brought it out in the last couple of messages or whatever but I guess it's hitting so hard right here again I'm going to say it again everything oh my goodness call it everything everything you do in this life from the year, when you're born you get to the age of what, what the generic of what we call the age of accountability where you know good and evil see that's why these young younger people that say that come to Christ and you don't really understand what you're doing because you're so young and you, you don't really know what the difference between good or evil yet 
That's why I kind of have an issue with these young people just coming and saying, yeah, I want to be saved. I think when that time comes, you know the difference between good and evil, and then the Lord convicts your heart. That's when it comes. Being young, not knowing the difference between good or evil, I almost akin that to when these babies are being baptized, with sprinkled with water, you know, and then then you're automatically in, and people know what I'm talking about when I say that. Which denomination when I say that? A religious group. Look, we take no pleasure. God, God said it was His will that it's not His will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance. He said He takes no pleasure in the death, of the wicked. But look, what is going? On? I, I, it would time would fail me that. Oh my goodness. Of all the things, the wickedness. We're, we're going to read some of the scripture here. Listen to these things. Say, so, well, brother, this is going to be Old Testament. It still applies. It still applies because when a nation turns its back on the Lord, it is going down. I'm just going to read a few verses. Listen up. Leviticus 18.26 Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments. Oh, United States of America, listen. And as I put my poor old cat here, my lap, wanting some loving here. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you verse 27 for all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled and 29 for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among the people. Deuteronomy 18 and 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, it's talking about going into Canaan land with all these tribes of these, you know, uh, uh, these uh, tribes of the Nephilim and the Rephaim and the Zamzumim and all these <laughs> Eames, uh, the giant tribes basically. So, and they were full of you know sorcery and you know black magic if you want to and all these other things supernatural stuff going on and everything like that it says when thou art come in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations and look how it is spread from <laughs> all the rest of the world up, up to the point now what do you mean well look every nation started out and then eventually goes into what goes into apostasy and paganism the United States heading that way look people we're supposed to be in the right now from where, here, here in good old East Tennessee we're talking about, right, right here in the Bible Belt I don't even think the only thing is the Bible, but I think the, I think the belt's been loose and taken off and tossed tossed away. And things were let. All the abominations, and we can go. We can, we can look here in the in the in the Old Testament. We can go into the New Testament. We can we can hey if you want to we 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 
read a laundry list of the sins that's going on. You don't know. She don't know any better. <laughs> do not eighteen and twelve. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So the Lord was helping take care of these things, pushing them out of the land getting rid of them as I've said before that's why we find these other people and these giant skeletons along with them all around the, the world go down here a little bit I can read and read and read let's, let's, let, let's look here about, it talks about abominations, idols, wood and stone, silver and gold. Listen to this. In 1 Kings 14, 24, it says, And there were also sodomites in the land. Does that sound familiar? Now this is worldwide at this point. So there were also sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations, uh, did all and they did, excuse me, let me read this again, mess this up. And there were also sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. <laughs> so, we have that sin since the very beginning as well. Sin was brought on once again by something that skipped a lot brought on by the sin brought on by the fallen angels mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 6 one of the sins brought on even that and that was actually that was even worse things brought on by them probably the actual act just and you don't want to talk try to keep this G rated most of the normal and I hate to even say normal when you talk about that of that stuff was brought on before that but it was even expounded and worse things were brought upon by that corruption brought on at that time I could go, there's so much, I could, you know, it's, I, I could say, I could spend 20 minutes reading about some, the abominations that Israel would, it was like this with Israel, just like this, just like a roller coaster. Learning the abominations of the nations, going back into them, coming out, and finally getting tired of being a defense defeated fallen nation and realizing hey wait a minute we need God would be nice as a nation if we would recognize that we need the Lord to pull us up out of that but no guess what we're comfortable I know the church the true and living God that we are part of at least I know I'm part of I'll say that I hope you can say the same thing we know we need to get rid of these abominations we need to come back to God Recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of the true and living God and come back to Him in repentance. And what does that He would come and He would heal our land. I want to see, a th if, if nothing else, I've been preaching, thought about this, and, and uh, uh, Lord help us have a third 
great awakening. One, one more time, Lord, that we may get some souls, even if it is a few, one last time, that we may gain some, we may make heaven their home. before the next huge flashpoint hits to bring on judgment. Because judgment is coming, friends. There's not enough people, not enough speaking judgment. I'm not saying I'm, I'm I, that I'm the righteous judge. No, I'm I'm in need of repentance and forgiveness, just like each and every one of you. And thank the Lord for grace and forgiveness. But you got to ask for that grace and forgiveness. I just can't live out in sin. This nation can't just stand in sin on one hand and on the other singing God bless America. Wednesdays I can't be here at the house or be out doing something, be outside working or doing something like that or whatever, doing thing, doing something in sin and then go be at the house of God at 7 o'clock Wednesday night shouting, kicking my heels, praising the Lord Jesus. I've done something that day, I needed to be getting it right with the Lord before I hit the house of God or if I hit the house of God and, I, and I'm fortunate enough to get there his grace allows me to get there then I'm to hit that altar and make it right this is we as a nation Uh, too many abominations to come through now let me say this it may chaff some people by law by civil law these people have the right to worship and do these things but they're not going to be held guiltless by the Lord But even through that, by the law they're allowed to do this, we still have a chance maybe to reach them, as I said, if they haven't went too far. Went past that point of forgiveness. And there again, when I hear these people say there's no one past the point of forgiveness, oh, the con oh contrary. <laughs> Bible, I, I pointed out. There is a, there is a, there's points that you can go past that there, that there will be no repentance. There will be no forgiveness given to you. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I'm just trying to show the truth of the Word of God. Which a lot of people don't want to bring forth. I'm not saying I'm, not, I'm, not saying, huh, I'm the only one. Huh, I'm, I'm that voice crying out in the wilderness. And I'm the only one. No, there's, I'm not. There's plenty of others. But I'm not going to sugarcoat the Word of God. When you come to the Word of God, you're going to come to it under God's conditions, not on your own terms, but His terms. We don't change the Word of God to fit our lives. We're going to turn ourselves around 
or allow the Spirit of God to turn us around to get in line with the Word of God. Amen. It ain't going to work the other way. It never has. Never worked that way for Israel. Worked that way for any other nation, any other person. It's not going to work for us. We're, brother, we're the United States of America. We, you know, God's blessed us. Yeah, He has. So we start turning our backs on Him, just by the grace and mercy that we've got as far as we have. But look at all the abominations that we've allowed to come upon this nation, brother. We've got a president that's a Christian, and he's he's for this and he's for that. Well, God knows His heart. I'm not being political. I don't want to be political. I've never been political. I hope he. I hope he is right. I hope he. And if he is right, and he's the man that God still wants in there, then he'll get another term, and he'll try to. He'll keep trying to turn this nation in the right direction. And the right direction is turning it back toward the Word of God, not politics, not anything else. I've said so many, 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 many times. There's no political solution to a spiritual problem. Amen. I think that's it for this video. Let's win as far as I need to. With this, I think the point <laughs> has been over, <laughs> has been made plenty. But let me ask you this before we go. Do you have any abominations in your life? Let's bring it home. Where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> Let's bring it home. Do you have any abominations in your life? Is there some things that you need to get rid of? Is there some things you need to put down yourself and put out of your way? That you can serve God with your whole heart. Because he's there. And he will gain. Or he will give you the forgiveness that you're seeking. That you can be fully in his will. Because if you've allowed certain things come in between you and him some abominations some things that have defiled you you're going to know it because the spirit of God is not going to be working through you if you've allowed abominations to creep in and you've been defiled by these things the spirit of God is not going to dwell in an unclean temple So if you've done anything, allowed anything to come in, I invite you, wherever you are, turn back to the Lord. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. Set whatever it is aside that you've put before the Lord, that you put an idol, another God before the Lord, and turn back to Him before it's everlasting too late. And if you've never accepted the Lord, He is right there pulling at your heart almost beg for you to turn to him before it's everlasting too late look at the condition look at the things that's coming and let me tell you something there's more coming very very soon we'll discuss that probably in another next video not to scare but I've got to sound the warning the watchman's they sound warnings of things to come. Accept the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Repent from your sins. Ask the Lord to come into your heart to save you and to give you, bring you salvation. Repent from your sins. Ask Him to save you. Come into your heart to take up a boat there. Forgive you for your sins. And He will. He will save you. He will give you everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you on the other side of this screen, of this video. <laughs> and blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you. 
come visit us the word of life uh, if you don't have a church uh, and you were looking around visiting uh, if you do have a church and be <laughs> uh, at your home church support your congregation and your pastor amen well that's right but uh, still never want to try to pull someone from another from your home church you're in the body as it pleases him he's placed you there so uh, like I said no, it was last minute, but tomorrow night, fellowship meeting, 7 p.m., Word of Life Church. And uh, you see the address on the opening part there. But uh, anyway, take care, and uh, we'll see you in the uh, next video. All right, bye now, guys.